to our places of work and for leisure, to limit the spread of this highly infectious disease, the government implemented measures aimed at minimizing physical interactions in the general population. The overwhelming majority of Kenyans have demonstrated great diligence in observing the COVID-19 guidelines. We are, it seems, getting used to the new normal. These guidelines have, however, had a devastating effect on the economy and the livelihoods of many Kenyans. As such, on Monday 6th, July 2020, the President Uhuru Kenyatta directed that we begin a phased reopening of the country while enforcing measures to keep the virus under control. More specifically, His Excellency the President ordered and directed the following. One, that the cessation of the movement into and out of the Nairobi metropolitan area, Mobasa County and Madera County would lapse at 4 a.m. yesterday, 7th July 2020. Two, that operators of the public transport vehicles that move into and out of these areas will require mandatory certification for the Minister of Health in consultation with the Minister of Transport. And three, that local air travel shall resume effective Wednesday 15th of July 2020. And that international travel, air travel, shall resume effective 1st of August 2020. All travel shall be in strict conformity with all protocols from the Ministry of Health and any additional guidelines applicable to the different modes of transport. After consultations with a cross-section of stakeholders, we have developed additional protocols that you apply specifically to road, rail, and air transport. These incorporate generally applicable risk mitigation measures, such as physical distancing, mandatory use of face masks, and other personal protective equipment as appropriate, routine sanitation, rapid health screening, and regular hard washing. They also include additional measures that have been tailored to the different modes of transport. Now, with regard to the three modes of transport, starting with the public road transport, this morning we had a very comprehensive engagement between various stakeholders, Minister of Transport, Minister of Health, Minister of Interior, including the NTSA, and the public operators of transport, all the three associations. And we'd like to report as follows. In order to enhance safety in public road transport, we are implementing the protocol for public road transport operations, which we have prepared jointly with the Minister of Health, the PSV operators, and other stakeholders. The protocol specifies measures to be taken to enforce physical distancing, facilitate contract, contact tracing, and to manage suspected COVID-19 cases. As directed by His Excellency the President, we have put in place an inspection and certification process of ensuring that PSV operators observe the new protocol and guidelines issued by the Minister of Health. You'll be given a detailed um, copy 
of the protocols themselves. But in summary, these protocols cover the following. Public education, that is provision of timely and consistent COVID-19 information to enhance passenger safety. Two, the protocols also involve or include physical distancing where physical distancing is not possible or feasible, but a border adequate risk-based measures shall be used. The use of face marks, masks is also covered in the detailed protocols. Routine sanitation, rapid health screening, and hard washing. Copies of those detailed protocols will be given to you. But let me say, uh, because I think that question has been raised before, with regard to what kind of certification. What we shall do is between Minister of Transport, Minister of Health, and NTSA, we are developing a checkbox whereby there's a document which you highlight in summary what I've just said. Hard washing, fumigation, sanitation. which will be produced between Minister of Health and NTSA, so that any vehicle, before it leaves these areas of Nairobi, Mombasa, which were previously at a cessation, they will be required to have that document. That document is being prepared today to make sure that from tomorrow, we can have operators having that document going into our vehicles. And then when they get into the counties, the accountability, responsibility becomes that of the public health officers in the counties in conjunction with the traffic police, in conjunction with the council of governors to make sure that there is compliance on a continuous basis. Because what we don't want is to have one document done today, somebody goes tomorrow, they don't follow the procedures again. So they will be monitored, monitored on a regular basis. So it becomes almost like a driving license that any public service vehicle must have that. It will be subject to instant supervision and inspection to make sure that they do carry that document wherever they go. Let me also cover the passenger train service. With the implementation of the new protocols, we plan to resume Madaraka Express passenger service between Nairobi and Mombasa on Monday 13th, on Monday 13th, 2020. I'm sure many of you have been missing this service, but at last it's back. On Monday, the first train you depart Nairobi at 8 a.m. and we arrive in Mombasa at 12.45 a.m. The same train will depart Mombasa at 1.25 p.m. and arrive in Nairobi at 6.40 p.m. thus leaving ample time for passengers to travel to their destinations before commencement of curfew at 9, 9 p.m. Kenya Railways will deploy or shall deploy 10 coaches for passengers with a total one-way capacity of 600 passengers. And that is 50% capacity. Because of social distancing, the train will be allowed to take only 50% of the total capacity. It will also have an additional coach which shall be used to isolate passengers suspected to be infected with COVID-19. So the extra coach will live empty. And we hope it will live Nairobi or Mombasa empty because it will only be used for only one purpose, and that is to carry any suspected case of COVID-19 detected during the journey between Nairobi and Mombasa and vice versa. We shall also provide a Nairobi commuter service rail service train that will link Nairobi SGR terminus and Siokimayo to Nairobi CBD. 
This service shall run from Nairobi CBD to the SGR terminus at 6.35 a.m. 6.35 a.m. in the morning. And from SGR terminus to Nairobi CBD to arrive at 6.50 p.m. in the evening. So from CBD, you don't have to take your vehicle to Nairobi uh, terminus of SGR. You can actually use this commuter rail, which will be very convenient for most of us. Let me also lastly cover air transport. In the aviation sector, we have implemented the protocol for air travel operations during the COVID-19 public health crisis. Airport terminal access shall henceforth, shall henceforth be restricted to workers and travelers only, except for cases where travelers require, or require special assistance. So don't escort people going to the airport if you are not traveling. You have no business going to the airport. The airport will be restricted for the traveler and, of course, the vehicles taking them there. The new protocol shall also include measures to min minimize contact between crew and passengers at the airport terminus and to limit physical contact between security officers and passengers and between airport staff and luggage. Air operators will reduce onboard service to the bare minimum and introduce boarding procedures to eliminate crowding at the aisles. So don't go to the aircraft expecting to be served a three-course meal. We are reducing all that because we have to reduce contact between the crew and the staff and the passengers. All crew shall be exempt from quarantine and this is important. All crew shall be exempt from quarantine after operating in a flight if the body temperature is not above 37.5 degrees Celsius. They do not, number two, if they do not display COVID-19 symptoms and there was no suspected case of COVID on their flight, where there is a suspected case of COVID-19 on the flight, the crew shall be quarantined at home at a designated facility. If they test negative for COVID-19, they shall be allowed to resume normal duties. Where layovers are necessary, crew members shall not be allowed to leave their hotels, their hotel rooms, except in cases of emergency. All passengers shall be exempt from quarantine on arrival at their destinations if their body temperatures is not above 37.5 degrees Celsius and they do not have a persistent cough, difficulty in breathing, and other flu-like symptoms. This is important because you do not expect a tourist to come from wherever they land here and then they are quarantined for 14 days. Nobody will come here. So it's important for that to be taken note of as we support the tourism sector. When there is a suspected case of COVID-19 on the flight, or if the above symptoms are detected, the passengers within two rows of the passenger with the symptoms shall be quarantined for testing. If they test negative for COVID-19, they shall be allowed to leave the airport. If they test positive, they shall be quarantined in accordance with the Ministry of Health guidelines. A number of airlines, I'd like to report, have confirmed that they will resume providing local air passenger transport services to various destinations across Kenya once the airspace is opened on the 15th of July, 2020. These airlines include Kenya Airways, Jumbo Jet, 
M Air, Boscovic Air, and Scenic Safaris. And I think as we announce this, uh, make these announcements, we shall get a lot more airlines coming forward because this is something people have been looking forward to. So ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, we have evaluated our plans to reopen the transport sector in full and are confident that they will assist in the containment of the virus. The steps we are taking are by necessity, gradual and incremental. And they will be matched with vigorous ongoing monitoring of the virus with appropriate actions being taken if there is an acceptable rise in the rate of infections. Let me close by saying and emphasizing that we must always stay alert while the COVID-19 pandemic persists. We must continue to control the virus and save lives. If we all play our part, we shall beat the virus while reviving the economy and boosting the economic fortunes of Kenyans. Um, that's the official statement. We'll be given copies of it. Um, but as you know, like we said before, this issue is about us working together and taking ownership jointly. This morning, when we had a meeting with the operators, we emphasized the point that they must take ownership in terms of the measures we are taking, and they must cascade that conduct and change of behavior to their clients who are their passengers. And that is critically important because, like you know, you heard the president say, we cannot put policemen, NTSA, public health officers in every corner of our country. And that's why it's important for people to take, take that ownership. We would like to, uh, I don't know whether they've come yet. Yes, uh, Mukabana is here. Dixon, yeah. uh, and Dixon, Bogua. Because we are talking about the 80% of public transport being handled by these people, by these good people. I would like them to, to give a uh, very brief, uh, make a few remarks in concurrence because we actually had this meeting together this morning. And uh, alone we cannot achieve as government as we are, we are, we are responsible for policy. They do implement. They are the ones dealing with 80% of, of all the public commuters. And so they need to tell us um, that they fully understand the protocols and how they will accurately engage in implementing those protocols. Let me first invite um, Mr. Edwin Mukabana, who is the chair of the association. Edwin. I thank you very much, Waziri. Uh, we would like to confirm that we had a discussion today with the Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Interior, and for the first time, I think we, was very happy. we were very happy because we also found the Council of Governors coming because this thing is covering the whole country. We discussed quite a number of things which uh, time may not allow for us to go through. But one of the things we did agree on is that uh, we have to save this country by ensuring that everybody we carry, we carry them safely, and that we protect our drivers and conductors who are also our people. And uh, ours is to tell, as the protocols come in, I don't want to get into the details of the protocols, but as the protocols come in, we are very, very uh, sure and we are aware that there is nothing that is difficult in those protocols. If they are implementable. Yes, sometimes they may cost us a little money, but maybe it, it will be worth it. So what we need to do is just to see how we can progressively start working on those particular protocols to ensure social distancing, we know. Wearing of masks, we have been doing it. Uh, if it comes to queuing, we have been doing it. 
perhaps the newest thing, uh, this is for the people who are going long, going long distance, is keeping the manifest, the passenger manifest, which is already in the regulations at NTSA, and it will not be a new regulation. So we need to follow those particular protocols. It's important that we do not break because at the end of the day, it is your life as a driver, it's your life as a, a conductor, it is your life as the vehicle owner because we'll continue interacting with these people. Key and most important is our passengers. Please do not stigmatize our passengers when they are driving by uh, getting somewhere and saying, we uko na corona, we uko na corona, toka kwa gari yangu. We do not want to hear those things. We want to hear people handled properly. The county government has agreed that they're going to put uh, dedicated areas where we can seclude those people along the routes. And we are hoping that that will be put in place uh, and ensure that we do a good transport system. Nevertheless, we'd like to ask the ministry that we would like a lot of assistance in terms of uh, where we can get uh, sanitizers, where if we can get assistance or because this is a long-term thing and you know we are carrying 50 passengers. If we are carrying 50 passengers, this is going to be very difficult on our bottom line. So we would like to encourage the ministry and the government to ensure that if there is any economic stimulus, you extend to us. Uh, where there are masks that can be given, please provide the masks for, to, for us and even our passengers. Provide sanitizers that are quality and have been tested for us to be able to use. And uh, nothing is impossible. The coronavirus was there in 1918. Whatever uh, flu, uh, Spanish flu, it went, and this will also go. Thank you very much, Waziri, and thanks for cooperation. Let's also have a Dixon Bogwe um, for the welfare of Madato owners. Thank you very much, Bwana uh, Waziri, and uh, all the protocol observed. I tend to think that this issue borders on collective responsibility. Let us not only think it is the Matatu crew, it is the police, it is the inner administrator that will enforce this. As the President said the other day, it is for all of us really to take charge. And in our sector, we implore more so to the leaders of the circles and the companies that oversee that all the vehicles are really compliant that all the vehicles really are uh, disinfected, disinfected and uh, there are sanitizers and washing places. But this is where we would want also to call upon the county government to provide the washing spaces at the main terminals of the, of the buses. Because without that, really, uh, we won't have so much sanitizer to provide for all the commuters that they do uh, rental services to us. It is important, and as uh, Edwin said, we had the HIV AIDS, we all know in the 90s, and we fought with it with a lot of advocacy, the do's and the don'ts. Even this one, we will have to conquer it through the do's and the don'ts. But the bottom line, collective, collective responsibility. Thank you very much. Now, um, the bottom line is about um, hygiene hygiene and enforcement. And for this, I'd like to give uh, one or two minutes each uh, to Minister of Health. Um, we have Dr. Kuria here, who is a um, public health director, but also we have uh, Kangende Thuku from the Minister of Interior, because enforcement is key for us to achieve what we are saying. So maybe two minutes each, um, just to emphasize on the key aspects of health. Hygiene. Thank you very much, CS. As we develop the protocols, we based uh, most of the guidelines on ensuring the safety of the passenger, the safety of the crew, and ensuring this continuity of service. Together with the Ministry of Transport and the NTSA, we the process of developing a certificate that will be issued to the drivers and we are cognizant of the fact of uh, how we as Kenyans behave and we always want to forge that certificate. We are working towards a system that you will not be able to forge certificate. 
from yesterday when the restrictions were lifted, we have had repeat calls at the ministry asking questions on where testing can be done. I want to reassure the public that the certification that we are talking about is not about COVID negative certificates that you require to go through testing. We want to clarify that. So those who are yearning to go for testing and they are lining up right now in several laboratories, that's not necessary. We shall be issuing guidelines before the end of the day on how you go about the process of applying for that new permit to apply through the areas that were restricted. I do not know if the Minister of Interior has removed the roadblocks. Maybe they need to be put back until you have your permit in place so that it was not a blanket opening of the roadblock. It was on condition that you meet the requirements and certification for the ministry. We'll probably talk about that after this. But the key to this, and particularly for the crew, the use of the face mask is critical. And uh, I can see, and we keep emphasizing, that even in our midst, they are right in front of us, those who wear their masks incorrectly, we are placing it on the drivers and the crew to inspect their passengers and ensure their masks are worn correctly. For the drivers, we are emphasizing again that this is a high-risk venture and the use of the appropriate mask, preferably a surgical mask, will be key to this endeavor. So it is in the protocol and the use of the correct mask and worn properly and ensure that your passengers are protecting you also is uh, enforced by the crew and the circus together. The issue of schematization has been raised here and we hope that through the call center and you're providing us another line and other hotlines through the counties that you do suspect a case you don't shout in the vehicle that you all behave decently and raise the call center the Ministry of Health is going to guide you as to where that case is going to be you want to be decent and responsible to each other so we urge the circus the matatu owners Minister of Transport and Interior that we go, we go through this together We'll be raising our public health officers to aid us in inspecting the vehicles so they comply with all the requirements. It's no use lifting the restrictions only to close down again after two weeks where the infection rate rises. So let's keep to the protocols. They are very simple. Hand washing, sanitize as frequently as you can. The virus will stay on surfaces, metal surfaces of the vehicle for quite some time. So, and uh, there are studies to that effect. So frequent sanitization of common such services is again key to this protocol. Disinfectant of that vehicle at the end of every day. So that should you have carried a case, remember we have said before, asymptomatic cases can still shed. So let us uh, uh, disinfect the vehicles at the end of the trips and follow that protocol to the letter and we'll be able to have a safe transport system through this and we journey together. Thank you very much, sir. Let's have now, finally, um, enforcement issue. Um, we have Kangede Duku, uh, of Minister of Interior. Uh, thank you, CS. Uh, I want to also to say that uh, the Ministry of Interior uh, will play a very major role in this collaborative effort in ensuring that uh, we work as a team. You are aware that uh, the National Police Service, the NTSA, and also the national government administrative officers are domiciled in the Ministry of Interior. And therefore, we are talking about uh, the certification. Along the transport corridors, we are going to ensure uh, through the various ra uh, roadblocks that uh, nobody passes, no vehicle, no transport vehicle uh, passes through the roadblock without that certificate. And we want to say that since we have agreed to work in a multi-agency approach, uh, we need to start from the, 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 the origin of these vehicles. We need to agree that uh, let us all comply because we'll organize it in such a way that uh, at the roadblocks where we'll be checking this certificate, uh, the vehicles will have to cease their journeys. We are not going to allow them to proceed unless they have that certificate. 
Uh, number two, we are also going to play a very big role in terms of uh, sensitization. You know that uh, the national government administrative officers are well networked uh, in the field. We are going to play our role in terms of uh, what we can be able to do uh, in terms of uh, creating awareness to the passengers uh, at the bus stops and generally at the general public. Again, in the Ministry of Interior, we have been using uh, a short code, code 988, uh, in which we encourage our 90 to report all sorts of issues, issues of security and issues of uh, service delivery. And again, I want to appeal to the public that uh, if the Matato operatives are not complying, we will be encouraged them to report uh, to the authority through that number 988. And therefore, as members of this uh, Mutege stream, uh, interior, we are going to play our role. Uh, we are also thinking about uh, withdrawing, uh, you know, and this is a bit extreme, withdrawing licenses for those circles which do not uh, uh, comply. But we need not go there. We are saying that uh, from the bus stations, uh, county government, all that who are involved, we will comply. So that at the roadblocks, it will just be a question of just checking. And therefore, CS, we are glad to be part of this team, and uh, we will do our best. Thank you, CS. Thank you. Now, would you, are there any issues and questions which are maybe not clear? We shall allow about three questions. Um, yes, uh, Bonifis. Okay, now, um, yeah, let's have about uh, two or three, then we can respond. Uh, the young lady. Okay, um, young man. Okay, last one. Last one. Sorry, speaker. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try to respond very quickly. Um, about um, the airlines, where they'll be required to also reduce their capacity because of the very compli uh, complex and robust uh, measures which have been taken uh, for airlines, we shall not be requiring them to reduce the number of passengers you know, flying with them. Uh, you can imagine, if we did so, no airline will fly because um, the cutoff point for airlines to break even is usually 75% um, uh, capacity. So if you do 50%, no airline will fly because they'll be making losses. But as you know, um, even for the crew, they have PPEs, you know, they have extreme measures in terms of passengers getting into the, pla into the plane. So because of those extreme measures, we are actually not requiring them to, to reduce the number of, um, of passengers. Uh, we, passengers leaving here, going to other countries, it will depend whether where they are going, COVID-free certificate is required. For example, I give you uh, an example if somebody is flying here into our country, it will be a requirement. You must have COVID-free certificate. Yeah? So I would expect that if you are flying out, even for the safety of the other passengers within the aircraft, 
it will be only be prudent for you to be tested. Because you may go the other side and find that you not be allowed entry into those countries. One thing you did not ask me, and I'm going to answer and you <laughs> without asking, is what happens to these airlines which are flying at night vis-a-vis -vis the curfew? Hmm? Because, <laughs> because they, they fly at night, at midnight, what you happen? We are giving special concessions, special dispensation, uh, that if you are flying at night uh, and you show uh, the road block, uh, you show the, um, the boarding pass or the ticket, you'll be allowed to go to the airport mm -hmm. together with your taxi driver. What you don't want to allow is now, you know, crowds of people escorting people to the airport. That will not be allowed. Uh, Linda, you ask about the pricing. Um, it is not part of the protocols. Protocols, we expect um, them to deal with hygiene issues, health issues, but commercial issues, those are commercial issues. You know, the pricing will be di dictated by competitive forces. If you overprice yourself, you're going to fly nobody. So we shall leave that to the airlines, uh, you know, to, to, to deal with that. Rafiki yangu aliuza mambo kama kuna certificate ya Lipo tukasema leo hii eh Kangeda alisema pamoja na mwanzangu wa Ministry of Health wakasema ni lazima hii certificate itoke leo. leo sijui kama wanaenda sijui kama hawaendi sijui. Maybe pengine Kangeda anaweza tuambia sisi. Lakini kutoka kesho kwa sababu hiyo certificate itakuwa imetoka. Ni lazima uwe na hiyo cheti. Uh, because it will be available and the Ministry of uh, Interior and TSA, they are working very hard with the Ministry of Health kwa kikija imetoka leo, leo hii and then lastly uh, passengers uh, being tested uh, for matatus, no we can't do I mean it's not feasible uh, to, to insist that if you are going to, into a long, you know, long distance bus at the Nazma we are tested it is not practical what we have to make sure is that they are screened with a uh, heat gun uh, screening to make sure that we are uh, you know, you are not having the symptoms. Uh, uh, it's not possible to uh, really test those people. But for airlines, that would be required because we are flying to another country. Kwaivyo, asanteni sana kukuja. We shall be updating you in due course. Asanteni. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.